I've always heard stuff like the physics used in our day-to-day life is quite different from the physics observed at the quantum level. Subatomic particles follow a mere probability function. Phenomena such as quantum entanglement have been seen where a single particle can exist in two not quite, not quite in two different places. It's not that's not how it works, but I'll come to that. What do you think is the reason for such an enormous difference in the physical state of bodies that coexist in the same universe but have to follow different laws of physics? Well, they don't follow different laws of physics. They follow the same laws of physics. But we see the macroscopic world, the ordinary world that we inhabit differently. And the quantum effects aren't that apparent at all in the in the ordinary mundane world that we live in. But when you zoom in, like hyper zoom in, then you will see atoms and molecules and, and subatomic particles like, like protons, neutrons, electrons and quarks and whatnot. And these particles, they obey the rules of quantum mechanics. So at some stage, at some scale, at some scale, the ordinary world that we are familiar with, this ordinary world emerges from the quantum scale, from the quantum world. Okay, it does emerge from the quantum world. So how does that happen? Yeah, that's the question. So, what kind of laws do quantum objects follow or obey? You you have, a, like you said, entanglement. But entanglement doesn't mean that a, two, a particle is in two places at once. It means a pair of particles that are described by the same wave function can be as far as apart as far apart as you want. Maybe a light year, maybe a hundred light years. But certain some of their properties are are correlated. So if you look at one particle, you'll ex- immediately know what is what is the corresponding pro- properties. What are the corresponding properties on the in the other part of the other particle, no matter how far away it is. But it doesn't mean there is faster than light communication or any, or any such thing. So that's a little uh, difficult to explain. But that's not how it works. I'm sure you've watched the some science fiction series like the Three Body Problem or whatever, in which they are communicating through entanglement. That's not how it works. That, that is so wrong. That is so wrong. So entanglement means two particles, you can have more, but let's say you have two particles that they are they are described by the same wave function and some some of their properties are correlated. Let's say very, very silly and very straightforward uh, comparison or illustration. Let's say you have a pair of gloves, a pair of gloves. Okay, I have a pair of gloves, one left-handed glove, one right-handed glove. I put one in one box, another in one box. I, I send one pair, one of the gloves to London. I send the other glove to Moscow. Okay, and I myself don't know which glove is in which box, which one has gone to Moscow, which one has gone to London. Now, my friends in Moscow and London, the moment they open the box, they will know exactly which box is there in the other place. That's kind of how how uh, entanglement works. So at the subatomic level, you have entanglement, you have superposition in which particles exist in in multiple states. In a superposition of multiple states, there is the observer effect, the collapse of the wave function. The moment there's a measurement or an observation, the wave function collapses. That is something you don't see at the at the classical level, at the macroscopic level. Uh, there are all kinds of other uh, phenomena that that are very. Uh, there, there is quantization, obviously. You know, uh, there is wave particle duality. So particles can behave like waves as well as particles. The the electron can behave like a wave. It can also behave like a particle. Photons, which are massless, can behave like particles as well as waves and so on. And you can you can prove this using experiments like the double slit experiment and, and all that. But such phenomena are not visible at the classical level, at the, at the macroscopic level. But these macroscopic phenomena emerge from the quantum from the quantum level. So what happens, see, for example, and it's because of the the wave it's because of the wavelength see the wavelength the the de broglie de broglie wavelength of a particle is it it uh, the smaller the particle is the larger the wavelength is and the larger the particle is the smaller the wavelength is so quantum phenomena are 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 become apparent and they take precedence over classical phenomena when the wavelength is significant significantly large so Photons have different wavelengths depending on the color of the light. This is blue. You're seeing blue photons emerging from this this fabric here. You're seeing orange photons from behind. So the light, it tells you the wavelength kind of if you know what the wavelength of what color is and so on. But this ball, it also has a de Broglie, de Broglie wavelength. But it's extremely small. And that's why the quantum effects 
are not apparent and when you i mean you can even solve the schrodinger equation for the earth moon system or the sun earth system and what it will give you is gigantic quantum numbers principal quantum numbers and all that and 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 uh, energy levels so the larger the quantum numbers and the larger the en- energy levels the less apparent the the quantum effects are so uh, that's what it is and then there is the correspondence principle niels bohr came up with the correspondence principle which essentially says that the larger the quantum numbers and the larger the energy levels etc the less apparent the quantum effects are so because of that what we have is that the ordinary mundane macroscopic world it actually is a quantum world but we don't see the quantum effects because they are not visible enough but there are certain objects certain certain phenomena that are purely quantum at the macroscopic scale bose einstein condensates most of us obviously will never see them but those are macroscopic quantum uh, objects phenomena macroscopic quantum phenomena that's one neutron stars well we don't really get to see them but those are quantum objects you know gigantic nuclei essentially atomic nuclei uh then you have crystals you see this this is an ordinary quartz crystal it's a crystalline object the properties of this crystal are purely quantum mechanical okay the hardness the shape the angle of uh, at which light, light reflects the colors all of this is purely quantum mechanical this is a purely quantum object this is a macroscopic molecule essentially so there are certain quantum effects that we see are visible we not may, may not realize, realize it but overall everything that that exists at the the classical level the macroscopic level emerges from quantum mechanics from the quantum world via the correspondence principle